Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to our next interview. I always love getting the opportunity to interview entrepreneurs as well, because it's a chance to talk about the inner working, the decision making, and also the journey that really helped someone become the entrepreneur that they are today. And what I'm really excited about our guest today is our guest has background in running multiple businesses. You know, that experience and that kind of, you know, build up that happens when you've run a business, had success, and then moved into your next business. I think that insight would be really amazing for many of you out there that maybe have been running for your business for a while. Maybe you're thinking about jumping into another business. And also, I think it's going to be helpful for many of you who are fairly new to the entrepreneurial world, because I'm hoping we'll be able to pick Bobby's brain today um, to get maybe insight on things that Bobby has kind of learned along the way. You know, we all have those moments where it's like, I wish I had known this when, so I'm thinking, even me included, we're going to hit some tidbits, some ideas, some recommendations on things that maybe some of us are coming up to a crossroads in our business, and Bobby will be able to help us through it. The other thing I'm excited about our guest today is not only the background, but also the journey and where Bobby is today. We're going to talk about the business. We're going to talk about Read the Ingredients as well as we're going to talk about being an author. I think it's an amazing thing that many of us as entrepreneurs do sometimes is branch out into other realms and talk about our stories and share that story with people and also what that experience is like. Um, so I'm hoping we spend a good amount of time really digging into these different opportunities and also letting everyone know about some of the new projects that are coming up that we can all jump into in ways that we can support Bobby and Bobby's vision. So first, let me just say thank you. Thank you, Bobby, for being here with me today. Absolutely. My pleasure, Stephanie. Thank you for having me. So as we love to do, I want to ground everyone because while I get the advantage point of doing all my research and looking online, you know, and, and, and checking you out. I want to make sure everyone gets a sense of who you are. So before we start talking about Read the Ingredients, your current venture, let's give everyone a little bit of that backstory. You know, what you've been working on before, what was your transition? How did you kind of transition into, you know, that journey from, you know, severe eating disorder over to, you know, whole food plant-based? And how did that get you to the point of starting your current business? Sure. So my background um, academically, all of my uh, university studies had a strong emphasis in business. I, business was always fascinating to me. And shortly after I joined the corporate world as an employee, I branched out and started my own companies uh, in different areas. So over the course of the last, oh boy, here I go aging myself, of the last my career now is getting on to 50 years. So over the past 50 years of my career, I have been in service industries, in product industries, but never have I repeated. Um, yeah, I've never like gone from one business to another that is just a, a like product or a similar um, situation. So so Read the Ingredients is the first time that I am in the uh, CPG, consumer packaged goods um, industry. And um, yeah, so career-wise, that's, that's where I am. Business has always fascinated me. I, uh, I love the challenge of learning new things. And, and that's in my personal life and in my business life. So I would do an industry. And by the way, I will say, I wholly believe when I talk to people about what they're doing for their career, you have to be passionate about what you're doing. It doesn't make sense to do something just to get a paycheck. It just doesn't. It's not good for our mental health. It's not good for our physical health. It's just not good to be on this planet for some limited number of years and be miserable going to a job nine to five. So whether you're working for someone else or you're an entrepreneur, be passionate about what you do. And that really is how my journey went. I was passionate about each of the different businesses I got involved in. Some of them overlapped each other. As a matter of fact, I'm still 
uh, involved as the co-founder and running and building two businesses right now with my business partner because we did both of these together. And um, yeah, so that's that's the journey that got me to yet another one um, at this point in my life. So, and that's the thing, I think we're excited about the fact that where you are today, because for many of us, you know, we can go online and grab some of these goodies. Um, But maybe let's talk about that journey. What was that process to get this business started, especially as someone who had previous business experience? Were there some things that you experienced that were surprises and ahas? Were there some things that you were like, you know what? I've been here before and this is how I'm going to do it differently because it's always helpful, I think, to kind of hear how we all make those decisions to start, whether it's another or our first business and what those first, you know, three months, six months and year experience is like. Well, as I said, you have to be passionate about what you're doing. And so none of the businesses that I started, I went, you know, something that was something that I planned. So before I can talk about what it was to be in this business. I I want to explain a little about why I was passionate about this one and why this was the one that we selected to do next. So um, yes, I do have a history of a very, very poor relationship with food, um, many years of eating disorders that then progressed to uh, disordered eating. And um, and then I just, I, my health was suffering, family members' health was suffering. And I went on this journey to really understand what it was to, to eat well and to have a good relationship with food, where food was not the enemy, where food wasn't a necessary evil. And in that journey, I uh, ended up within, it took me probably four, five years in the journey, gradually doing different things. And this is all documented in, in the book that I wrote. Um, I, I ended up in a whole food plant-based diet and, and then progressed to adopt a a very much a vegan lifestyle. Um, And I have never felt better, but uh, at the time, my partner and I, my partner, by the way, is my oldest son. Uh, and this is the second business we did together. Um, and, uh, um, and I will say an amazing business partner. Uh, but, uh, um, we had another business and it was not a vegan business. It was food. It wasn't CPG. It wasn't packaged food, but it was, uh, not a, um, not a vegan business. And, and so my passion for that business really was waning quickly and uh, and it was time to sell anyway. At the same time, I was on this journey to eat healthy. And what I found is there are no super clean, uh, gluten free and um, vegan products that are packaged that I could eat on the go. And, um, you know, you can't I can't be tra- I started traveling uh, and um at that time, that was probably six, seven years ago, six years ago. And I was traveling and I can't eat. I mean, I would be all day in airports and airplanes and, and there was no food. And, and normally for a gluten-free vegan diet, you, you know, you, you're making your food, you're preparing something. Mm -hmm. Um, And so uh, that's where the recipes came from. And I strictly created the recipes that is now our super loaf and a a second product that we have that we are reformulating and we'll bring back. But I created these recipes so that I could take food with me when I traveled and it was food that would sustain me and that I could, um, you know, eat while I was on the go. And, uh, and, and, and that was for me. And we shared it with, I shared it with my partner who was transitioning into a healthier diet and a bunch of other people. And they were like, oh my God, where do I get this? Where can I get this? And, and it just kind of happened that way. Now, to answer your question, um, every other business I started, as I said, they were in different industries. They were, um, you know, completely different from each other. So I always approach a business with doing as much research as I can to create a reasonable business plan. And then I know for the first several months, it's pulling out all the stops to learn everything that you can learn. I mean, I can't stress that enough. You, 
if you're going to go into different industries, it is all about the inner workings of the industry. It's all about who you know. It's all about aligning yourself with vendors and partners and employees who are the right people. And um, building relationships is the key to successful business. I don't care what product you have. I don't care what you're doing. If you can't build successful relationships with vendors, with customers, with employees, don't even bother. I mean, because that's going to be your key to success. So we went into this business like any other. I mean, I have to tell you that I will use the word naively, very naively. I have, um, I, you know, I, I had the formula for how do you start and build and launch a business before the better for you food business is so much more complex than any other business I have ever done. I mean, mm -hmm. it really is, it has so many layers and um, operations can be complex because you have to work with other people. Sales is complex because you have many layers that you have to get through to get it on the retail shelf. Online sales is very complex because uh, online marketing is a very, very crowded and congested um, field. And to make it all more challenging, we have a unique product. I can't stress that enough. If a super clean packaged product that is grab and go wherever available, I never would have created this business. Never. So we're, we're all the people that are our target market don't even know to look that it for exists. Yeah, product. that's the hard part. Yeah, they don't right. know to look. They don't know right. it exists yet. Yeah. Right. And we have, you know, that has been our biggest challenge. How do we get the attention of our target market? The super clean eating vegans, the, the you know, the, the people that really want every calorie that they put in their body to be nutritional and have value. So our products have no added sugar. Our products have no processed ingredients. Our products are completely whole food ingredients. Um, it's, you know, it, there's no stabilizers, there's no preservatives, there's no, we don't even, cause we believe it's too sweet. Plus not everybody likes it. We don't even use dates, which so many other people use oh, for yeah. sweetness. Mm -hmm. I mean, our products are super, super clean and, um, very balanced and high protein, good carbs, good fats high fiber. It's all the things that we need and want right now, especially as we are becoming more and more as a culture, more and more aware of how important uh, health and our immune system and taking responsibility for our health is. Absolutely. And I think one of the key things that I love about the story and the journey that you've been on is that it has a very functional use as well. For many of us, when we're traveling, that is one of the hardest times to be consistent. It's hard to consistently just eat in general, but then be able to eat, you know, when you're in different time zones, when you're traveling, you know, when you're up later than you should have, because you did the red eye, you know, all of that stuff, you know, that throws things off and you want to reach for something healthy when you're already in that kind of flux state, often you don't have it. You don't have that compliment. So being able to have something that, you know, you can grab, put in your bag, <laughs> travel with um, is definitely something I think it's exciting for people and also exciting because more and more alternatives that are coming to the market. Sometimes the alternatives are trying to directly compete with the status quo and because of that, they have to put a lot of sugar in it because of that, you know, it almost has to taste like yes. and feel like and texture like. Yeah. And I understand that market. And it's important because we're trying to move that market over to a cruelty free option. But I also think, like you said, there's a need for people who don't want something that tastes like A, B and C. They just want something healthy. Right. And so I think it's it's exciting when you can build a business that fulfills that that need. Um, but like you said, it can be hard to find customers and so forth. The other thing I loved that you said is when you talked about the relationship and absolutely, I think for a lot of people, it clicks that they need relationships, but I think sometimes people don't think of the word relationship when they're thinking about their customer. You know, they're thinking of their customer as 
less of a two-way street. You know, when you think about a relationship, it's back and forth, um, mm -hmm. where a lot of times people think of their customer as, well, I just got to get them to love the product and that's it. Do you want to expand on that? Like, what, what does that mean to you when you say building that customer relationship? Because I think that might be something for people to rethink how they interact and create a two-way street with their customers. Yes, absolutely. So, I, I mean, this, I am adamant about this. I will tell you that I believe my success in business over my career has to do with the realization that customer service, and I'll call it customer service, and it carries over to the relationship, but customer service is key. Absolutely number one. So when you start a business or when you create a brand, your brand has a personality. And one of the things, and, and, and if you are an entrepreneur and you are starting a business, that is something you should do on day one is start to define what is the personality of your brand. So one of the things that has absolutely been critical across all of the businesses that I have done is transparency and integrity. And, um, and so that carries over to, to the customer service thing. And I don't want a customer to ever guess, like I'll use read the ingredients as an example. So you eat foods that the packaging says healthy on it. Well, what do they base that on? They base it on, well, maybe it has extra fiber, but it has all these other things in it that are not so healthy. Or um, they say no sugar added, but they're adding all kinds of artificial sweeteners. And, you know, and so transparency, like our customers can count on if we give them something, they know it's clean, they know it's healthy, they know it's good for them. Um, and how do we play that out? Well, initially we launched a hundred percent online and then due to COVID, we stayed a hundred percent online for uh, the, the last two and a half years. We are just now um, getting, starting to get into retail. And, um, and that means we know who our customers are. Like we have direct contact with our customers. We get emails all the time and, you know, um, oh, I, I'd like it to be um, whatever. I mean, whatever it is. And if there's any question, at one point we changed our formula and we used a different protein than we were using before, still plant-based. And we got a, a note from one of our very loyal customers that said, I'm not sure that I can do hemp protein. And our response was, You've been a great customer here. We're sending you a sample of all, you know, of all our flavors. Try them. Let us know if it works for you. I mean, this guy would not. We've had other dialogues with him. We've had many, many customers that we, we interact with. They are not going anywhere, not only because our product is unique, but our customer service is second to none. Like they know we're here. They know we respond to every email we get. Um, they know that they can count on if we, we say our product is this, our product is this. Our name says it all. Read the ingredients. Read the back of your packaging. Make sure you know what you're eating. Make sure you know why it's good for you. Um, and, and that's really important. And so building that, um, you know, that relationship of your brand personality to the personalities of your consumer it is so important. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for a lot of people, it intimidates them at times because they're not sure how to respond. Or, you know, you also hear the stories of like, well, what if this happens? And, and you get afraid of the example that, you know what I mean? The, 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 you know, kind of like the kid, the monster under the bed kind of concept <laughs> that it might be there. So you, you know, don't engage like you should, but I wholeheartedly agree with you. Engaging with customers, finding out what are they struggling with, what are their issues, because often before it becomes the monster under the bed, um, it can be resolved by just talking or even the example that you gave where you said, well, try these options. Let us know which one works. Sometimes people are really just looking for a solution. And when a business can step up and help the customer solve for the issue, I think it really creates you know, it creates starts it starts creating not only a great experience, but a track record of listening and acting. 
No question. And it's really no different. You know, I think relationships are just the key to life. I really do. And I think um, it's no different. You know, if we screw up, we apologize. You know, if an order didn't go out or an order got delayed or whatever, even if it's not, quote, our fault, we are the accountable party and we take responsibility for that. Um, if you don't mind, I will use another example about relationship. Um, the title of uh, my book is Freedom from a Toxic Relationship with Food. And when I wrote the book, I am adamant that it is not about what we eat as much as at least the foundation of being healthy and approaching food as a as something that is, you know, food as medicine, as, as the old saying goes, um, is all about the relationship we have with food. And, you know, people don't look at how they eat as a relationship with food, a relationship with ourselves. Are we willing to take care of ourselves or punish ourselves? A relationship with how do we deal with food when we're in social situations? How do we deal with, and this is a really, really big topic for me, how do we deal with when we are around other people that don't, let's just say, are not vegan, for an example. And it's like, okay, do we go, well, it's more important to socially fit in. Do we know how to keep our integrity to ourselves? Do we know how to broach the subject so that our audience is receptive to what we're choosing to do? And it's okay if you don't. Um, and, and all so, so I really think relationship is at the foundation of everything we do. And it has to show up in business. And people feel, I know I've talked to a lot of people that say, relationships in your or who you are in your personal life isn't who you are in your business life. And I will argue that to my death. You are in a business situation, the same person that you are at home. I, I, you know, I engage, my intent is to engage with my family and my friends the same way that I engage with people that I know through whatever my career or work is at the time. Uh, as a result, you get a lot more friends. Um, but uh, <laughs> it definitely makes sense. And I also think sometimes we have to examine who we want to be in that public sphere because we haven't thought through those relationships. It's just like the example you said, like, how are you going to handle it if you're at an event and not everyone's vegan? How do you handle an event where, you know, even when you go to a work function and they don't have a vegan function, you know, are we going to throw trays up in the air and yell at people or are we going to have a solution or is there a way to do it? I think for a lot of us, we haven't thought through either what those relationships are. So sometimes our eating habits are such habits that they're not, we're not even consciously realizing um, that we're, you know, what we're doing to ourselves <laughs> through our maybe unhealthy relationships with food. And even on the business side, I think sometimes we haven't thought through what those relationships are going to be like. How do you want to manage them? And how do you want to be more of yourself in those environments? Because it does take a little bit more practice yes. to not be the, and I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but not be the, you know, the poster of what people think you should be in a work function or work event versus being able to be closer and closer to who you are. Yeah, no, no question. And, you know, I, I do, we all come up against that all the time. And um, I, I want to go back for a second, though, and address that in the context of read the ingredients. So my journey, and I believe a lot of people's journey to where I am today in a vegan lifestyle, really did start out 100% focused on my health. And people that are very, very conscious about um, what they eat are habitual eaters. Uh, it's the people that, you know, are less habitual eaters or eat more diverse things, unfortunately, and usually includes more junk, um, are, are people that are stay less conscious about the nutritional side of what they eat. So um, our products really were made 
for that habitual eater. And I will tell you, I'm one of them. Um, and I wasn't one prior to my journey that started 10 or 11 years ago. Um, and I have had a, uh, read the ingredients, super loaf for breakfast every single day since I created the recipes six or seven years ago. We only launched it as a company two and a half years ago, but you know, you this, eaten it. <laughs> right. And what we have found also in, we offer a sample pack where you can try one of each of our flavors, the four flavors. And, um, what we have found is we do struggle to find our perfect audience, our target market. Um, but once our target market tries that sample pack, they convert to a subscription like immediately, immediately. And so our conversion to subscription rate is higher than any brand I have ever seen because we are attracting the or attractive to the habitual eater who is very conscious, who needs that packaged, super clean, super healthy product. And, um, and, you know, and so now we'll offer, we offer different size bundles, but we offer just recently started a 28 uh, pack bundle. And that person is on an every four week subscription. That means they're eating That's one nice. every single day. And our products are a complete meal. I ought to mention that we call it a functional bread. Um, but it's, you know, in the four different flavors, it's, it's like an unsweetened, I hate to use the word muffin or something, but it's in the menu of shape. It's a, but it's a complete meal calorically, nutritionally. Um, it's, it is absolutely a complete meal and it will sustain you because you're not getting the sugar rush and the sugar high. So it sustains, you know, many people it's their breakfast and, and they don't eat again until late in the day, whatever dinner is. Um, oh, wow. That's pretty impressive. And what I also liked is just picking up on those marketing pieces, because a lot of our audience are entrepreneurs themselves or business owners and so forth. I really like the piece that you talked about how you're creating customers, because for a lot of people, they struggle and they say, well, I wanted to build something for this segment, but I'm worried I'm not reaching enough people. And what they end up doing is trying to then create a product for everyone. And then they expand their business so far that, you know, they really don't get that, that edge and, you know, products for everyone, you know, no one feels like they can see themselves in their product. But I really like the idea that you're saying, hey, we're creating people a bundle, we're giving people almost a sampler. And the sampler is almost a tool to convert them into subscription. It's a nice kind of marketing and business and sales kind of funnel in a sense, where you found a way to get people that initial start and then turn them into repeat customers. Because I think for a lot of businesses, they're always in that acquisition, acquisition mode, and they haven't figured out how to really create that repeat customer because that revenue stream can really keep some stability in businesses. Yes. Yeah, no, no question. And that from the very early days was our biggest challenge. Um, we've worked with different marketing agencies that were not successful. We have a woman now supporting our marketing efforts who's amazing, who gets our product, who knows how to position. And, um, and it's a game changer because, yes, we all we recognize we being all of us that with attached to read the ingredients in any way, recognize we may only be interesting to 0.1 percent of the market. You know, yes, we we can target the vegan community, but we're not specifically for the vegan community. We're specifically for the community that cares about every calorie they put in their body and that it has value and that they're not putting junk in their body. I mean, you see the reports that what you eat is either taking time off your life or adding time to your life. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and we are that product that is convenient that will add time to your life and absolutely add quality to your life. I, I am, I, I am in that stage of life. I am a woman of a certain age. I'm in my late sixties and I can tell you, I feel better than I did in my forties and I'm very, very active and I have the energy to do with my life, what I want to do. And that's what clean eating does. And, and that quality of life. It matters. It really matters. And I think a lot of people, you know, feel stuck and struggle with how do I get there, you know, and even like we said, for traveling, we almost kind of 
throw our hands up in the air and say, well, traveling, the best we can do is, you know, grab A, B, and C, you know, yeah. kind of junk food because, you know, it, it's better than nothing kind of thing. Right. So being able to have um, this option and option that you offer, I think makes a really big difference. Uh, the and- only thing I wanted to make sure we covered, just looking at time, because I'm realizing we're having such a good time chit-chatting here. Um, I wanted to make sure people knew about what you're working on next. We had a chance before we started the interview to t- start t- to talk about um, the Kickstarter project that you're working on. Do you want to give everyone a little bit of background on what you're working on, what it is, and also how they can participate? Sure. So, um, yikes, because we didn't launch it yet, I, I'm not exactly sure how it works, Oops. but I, I know if you okay. go to Kickstarter and search on Read the Ingredients starting next week, because we're not launching it until next week, but we are doing a Kickstarter campaign where we are offering our products and some other things, including my book at different levels and including my partner as a certified nutritionist, so sessions with him. But we really, our our point is twofold. Number one, yes, we want to raise a few dollars to go to, to go to, um, it's very expensive to get into retail. So that is, uh, that's to give us some financial support to go into retail because um, we're uh, very aggressively uh, doing that right now. And um, and second, it's to get to really more, find more of that, that niche market that we know we are a fit for. So yes, we have a Kickstarter campaign that will start next week. Um, we're really proud of it. We, uh, you know, we, we think that we have put something together that will like have a light bulb go on. Oh, right. So that I don't have to eat junk. Um, I can have this with me at, at all times. And, and, you know, and, and it will be uh, the answer to it, it addresses a problem that exists out there. So that's okay. our primary thing. We are getting into retail and, um, and we hope first in California and we hope to pretty soon be more widely available. But right. until then, we are available at www.rtifoods.com as well as on Amazon and on a few other uh, very vegan focused um, shopping sites. But rtifoods.com is the, the best way to find us and to really learn what we're all about. And what if people want to follow you on social media? What's your handles on Instagram, Facebook? Is it similar? Uh, yes, at Read the Ingredients, the whole the whole uh, title, at Read the Ingredients on all of them, including LinkedIn. Um, yeah, and then there's okay. and then my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, uh, Freedom from a Toxic Relationship with Food, which really does support and help people who feel they need to get on that journey of their own to feel better um, and, and, you know, really address the health issue that exists and is so prevalent in in our culture. Yeah. I think it's, it's really key for us to all, you know, rethink because sometimes, sometimes our habits are even just from childhood. You know what I mean? They've been passed down to us, you know, or we've watched or seen someone else and we've, you know, kind of, learned many great things from other people in our lives and our journey, but then we also pick up habits as well. And I think sometimes our relationships with food aren't even our choices in the beginning. And it's an opportunity for us to like reclaim our choice um, and really say, well, how do you want to eat? What do you want to be your path? What do you, you know, how do you want to improve that relationship? Like you said, with food. So I'm really glad we had a chance to talk about that. I really hope many of you who are watching this, whether you're watching it live or listen to the podcast or listening to this as a replay, I really hope you take a look at Bobby's book. It's Freedom from a Toxic Relationship with Food. So make sure you Google it, look it up and check it out because I think it can help many of us in our relationship with food because it is something that, you know, you make a choice at multiple times every single day. So it's good to get that relationship right. And then also, um, as we wrap up, we went a little bit longer than I normally do in our interviews, but I do want to ask you one final question as we wrap up. And it's around that kind of niche marketing or building a business around a niche. I think for a lot of people, they struggle with that idea. They sometimes get too worried that if I go after a niche, and I don't mean just vegan as that niche. Um, I'm really glad you defined your niche is much wider. And I think for many of us, our, our niches are much wider, but they're still niche marketing. And a lot of people struggle with it. They get so worried that 
they'll exclude people. They get so worried that maybe they can't grow. You know, there's just a lot of concern and, and, and fear um, around that. How, or what would you say to anyone who's, you know, approaching a niche that's building a business around supporting a niche to help them either feel at ease or any advice that you have for them and how the best way to approach bringing their business or their product to market? So on it, I'll be 100% honest. We haven't cracked the code yet, but I will okay. tell you this. We've learned a lot along the way um, about what not to do. I think you have to be, and you mentioned this earlier, you have to be so true to who you are. We don't, don't like, if there were people who got back to us and said, we want more, we want more sweetness in your product. It's the product's not for them. It's not for us to say, oh, okay, now we'll start adding sugar to our product. So, so number one, stick to what you're doing. Number two, think outside the box as best you can, like just, and, and sometimes that thinking outside the box is brainstorming with people outside of your immediate circle, like find people in that niche market and, and whether it's the new customers or whoever and ask them, what brought you to this product? What brought, what got your attention? You know, and how do we find more of you is the question that you as the entrepreneur needs to really ask. So, um, and if you do, I mean, it is marketing, uh, prepare yourself when you are um, looking at a, a smaller target market or a niche market, prepare yourself for marketing to be more expensive in the beginning. There's no question that, it, it takes marketing dollars. Um, and, and so there's all kinds of things, but we haven't yet. I, I can't honestly say that we have cracked the code yet, but I can say that our commitment is there to find those people. And every time we get a note from a customer telling them how, telling us how much they love our product and how they eat it every day and how they're upping their subscription, it just it's it just keeps you going. And, you know, those are the people that we want to find and find more of them. Perfect. No, I think that's great advice. And also, I think one thing I might just add, or at least it's been my experience as well, is that even when sometimes you crack the code, you often find that you still have to find alternate solutions. Yes. Um, and then sometimes the the marketing that you do will work for a while. And then it changes just because the channels, like you said earlier, they either get a little bit more overcrowded, they get very expensive, the return's not there. Um, and for me, I've just, it's been an interesting journey for me from a marketing standpoint on how much you really have to move sometimes with the market. Like your marketing is not just, I do this, this is what everyone does and it works. That sometimes it's about, you know, being a little bit flexible and constantly learning not just what works, but building a system around constantly identifying the next thing that will work. So you always have a solution in your back pocket. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I can tell you that the people we've worked with, the agencies and people that we've worked with in marketing that just think they have the formula and want to do the same things over and over were really miserable failures. And I acknowledge that now completely. Um, and we learned a lot from that. And, you know, no, you want, I mean, people who are in marketing need to be very dynamic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day. I'm sorry I kept you a little bit longer than usual, but we were on a roll and I just loved hearing about what you were doing, your story. Um, and it's just so great to hear that, you know, you're building a product that's really for people who want to get the healthiest items in their body. It, it really is so important to have brands um, like yours out there. It's so important that we as consumers, so everyone out there, please, please, please make sure you 
take a look at the site, make sure you look for the Kickstart project and make sure you get familiar with Read the Ingredients. And also, I'm just really excited about maybe picking up your book one day and reading your story um, as well. You know, I Googled it and, and checked it out, but I can't wait to get my hands on it and potentially even dive in a little bit deeper. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your inspiration. And thank you for so much for creating a business um, for many of us out there that want to eat healthier as we travel as well. Thank you, Stephanie. It really was a pleasure. Great. Now, everyone who joined us, whether you joined us live or recording or podcast, please, please, please leave a comment. Let us know what you thought about the interview. Let us know if you have any questions. Let us know if we can help you get in touch with Bobby and the team. We always love, love, love for you to connect with our guest. Um, and we always thank you so much for your support. We always thank you so much for showing up, listening, and helping spread the word about how people are starting vegan businesses, how we're supporting our communities, and how we're ultimately getting more and more products to market um, that are cruelty-free, but also great and healthy for all of us out there. So thank you, everyone, and I'll see you in our next interview. Bye. <music>